arts education. It began through her love of Argentinian tango and living in Buenos Aires. She speaks four languages and specializes in watercolors, mixed media, acrylic, and sacred geometry. Wow, that's fantastic. Love that. Let's give it up for Jennifer Roberts. Hey, Jen, go get it. Okay, guys, once again, you'll have 20 minutes to throw down, and all of these lovely people around here will be able to check out your artwork. So, we got the timer up. Wonderful, Mikey. Thank you so much. Let's get Art Battle ready going in five, four, three, two, one. Art Battle, round one. All right, we are on, and Art Battle round number one has just started in San Francisco, and these guys are off to an excellent start. I am so excited to see what they come up with tonight. Uh, my name is Morgan Booth, and I'm here with Tyson Cody. Hey, Tyson. Hey, Morgan. Thank you so much. It is exciting to be here virtually watching in at this amazing event. It's always so exciting. Art Battles is a fantastic event, so thanks everybody at home for tuning in. Uh, we have some pretty excellent artists lined up for you guys tonight as well. Uh, and we have our first six stepping up to the easels. They got 20 minutes only on the clock. And for those who are not familiar with Art Battle, we're gonna have our first six artists in round number one, another six artists in round number two, and then the top two artists from each round as voted by you, the audience, will move forward into a four artist final showdown. Uh, right now we're checking out Joseph Shook, who uh, is holding his canvas in a really interesting way. I don't think I'm used to seeing this. Are you Shook, would you say? I'm Shooketh, I'm Shook, <laughs> Shooketh. <laughs> It looks yeah, like well, he's like using always, it as a mess. Yeah, I see. And it's always so exciting to see the different approaches that these painters bring to the uh, to the stage here at Art Battle. And, uh, you know, Joseph is a perfect example. And starting off with a pencil drawing, it looks like as well, which is um, always a, a, an interesting approach and, and start off to a, an image. Yeah, I'm really digging uh, this use of technique of him just leaning it as if he's drawing on a, a drafting table and just seeming so chill about it. Um, and yeah, maybe a little bit of a bridge going down with some graphite. Could be. Ooh, bringing in the blue. Coming in hot with the cool blue. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna go uh, a little landscapey with that piece, and I'm I'm here for it. All right. I believe that this is. Uh, not sure which artist this is yet, but I feel like it could be Wendy Trapner. Um, but anyway, they are working on the floor and have just so much paint already down on the canvas. I uh, really just loving that this artist is just completely going for it yes no kidding they are wasting no time whatsoever so much of the canvas has already been hit with paint with still 17 minutes and 30 seconds left so you know we shall see where uh where she takes it yeah so much time left on the clock and so much paint has already been applied at this point it uh makes me wonder whether or not she's going to encounter any difficulties navigating so much wet paint. What do you think? You know, that's a great question. Um, and certainly a lot of paint at that. Uh, you know, only time can really say here, Morgan, and I'm excited to find out exactly uh, what transpires uh, this round here. Ooh, and it looks like we're getting some really interesting uh, textural application techniques here with uh, this dragging of the palette knife. Yes, indeed, the painter's sword. The painter's sword. <laughs> uh, here we are with Jess Bolt, who, oh my uh, God. go for it, go for it. Is this a bird's eye view of, this, of a cityscape? Is this San Francisco that we're looking at in bird's eye view? I think it is. I think she's, that she's collaged a map on here. How cool is that? Oh my gosh, that is a, a cool power move. And you know, this really speaks to the excitement of live painting when uh, a painter really brings something that has a wow factor off the bat. And 
you know, and that's exactly the kind of strategy and approach that will, you know, often serve a painter well in the vote, of course, because this is a ruthless competition and uh, everybody at home listening, do tune in to artbattle.com slash AB2479 to cast your votes each and every round. It really matters. Yes, every single vote counts. We are often hearing from our voting managers that uh, it can really be neck and neck. So uh, you guys have lots of time to decide still, but make sure that you brace yourself for having to choose one, one artist to vote for. Absolutely. And this is a very interesting uh, abstract uh, composition here. Loving the, I guess it could be a cityscape, isn't it? Maybe against the water? Oh, good eye. I don't think I would have caught that. I think that you're right that we're going uh, abstract, but also cityscape. And this is Wendy Trapner. And Wendy uh, has this really intensely textural way of painting. She often is incorporating um, using the impression of found objects as well. So I'm hoping that we see um, a little bit of weirdness from Wendy. I would love to see a weird object make an appearance. I'm loving this shot right now, seeing the contrast of these two painters at work. You know, over here, Wendy, we're seeing, uh, you know, maybe a more traditional abstract uh, painting. And then to the right, something quite unusual here from Jennifer. This yeah, is the very way that cool. she's using the directionality of the drips is so cool. I'm uh, sitting here watching and I've literally got my head tilted to the side. So this piece is already super engaging for the audience. Absolutely. Yeah, that was super cool. Yeah, it's interesting to see the uh, uh, opposing grip directions. And so, you know, we'll see if Jennifer even applies more uh, paint with lots of water to uh, to cause some more contrary drips. We shall see. Yeah, I love the way that they're kind of just crisscrossing over each other and creating this like really beautiful organic netting. Mm hmm. Well, there it is somewhat organic, isn't it? It almost looks like moss hanging from trees. Oh, totally. I totally see that now. That's one of my favorite things about um, abstract work is that we're always, our brains are always seeking representation within abstract. And so there's so much opportunity to see different things. Everybody's going to see something different. That's a great point. Absolutely. The inclination to derive meaning, but uh, especially in, in abstract, uh, you know, paintings, it often just doesn't mean anything specific. <laughs> Your brain just gets the opportunity to kind of dance around it. And mm -hmm. uh, wow, gorgeous movement in this piece from Rosanna. Yeah, almost like a forced perspective bird's eye, uh, or not bird's eye, but fisheye lens. Um, it almost seems like, which is very cool and very engaging. Certainly a very dynamic, lively composition here. And, uh, and uh, an interesting little figure there in the distance hanging from an enchanted swing set. Now, this is a great, very intriguing picture here. How fun. I'm really loving this piece. And I, I love what you said about um, having that kind of fisheye perspective. And the way that everything is converging and the use of silhouettes here is almost reminding me of like classical silhouetted puppet theater. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Maybe my reference is too obscure. Hmm. I'm not so sure that is resonating at the moment, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, but the gradient awesome. background is really gorgeous as well. Mm -hmm, it is. It's just a little whimsical and a little enchanted. Ooh, and we get to continue to be shook by uh, Joseph. I can't wait for him to step away and to see what we're what we're shaking with here. Mm hmm. No kidding. Oh, talking about gradient. Look how soft this is. Very soft. And, and it's uh, a little overexposed right now in the camera, so it's a little hard to decipher exactly the nuance of it, but um, I'm intrigued. Ooh. <laughs> we both almost made the exact same sound at the same time. We, just adding in <laughs> that little dash of color, I was just about to go, ooh, the yeah. exact same reaction. <laughs> I think I it's love the it. reaction. And I, I have to assume that the, the viewers at home would, would have likely uh, said something similar in that, in that very moment. 
if you said ooh in that moment, drop in the comments. Let us know if you are uh, <laughs> also in the same place as we are. We would love to hear from you. Oh, okay. So Joseph, I think, is doing a bridge. We already figured that out. And then we have uh, Anna, who was our artist that was on the floor, also doing a bridge. And then I'm pretty sure Jess around the side is doing a bridge as well. So we have uh, a night of bridges. Wow. No kidding. I guess it's, um, you know, the bridge is on the mind in San Francisco. The bridge is on the mind. We have bridging, connecting to each other, referencing the city, all kind of uh, opportunity for us to uh, really interpret all of these pieces. Absolutely, you know, and um, it uh, certainly plays uh, plays well to the audience there present tonight um, to appeal to them to uh, try to gather some of those votes tonight and also for the auction because, uh, you know, who wouldn't want a, uh, a beautiful painting of a bridge on your wall? And you indeed could have these paintings on your wall. You can cast your votes in our in our auction at artbattle.com slash AB2467. I just am really... Uh, falling in love with the way that Anna has executed the red of the bridge. It's just this careful line work. Uh, and there's something about the way that she's just kind of put it in so roughly that is really working for me. We have a lot of smoothness going on in the sky and then this interruption of the strong red really boldly applied. Absolutely, and and uh, she's also um, added some accents along the uh, the right side of the structure to indicate as though uh, it's catching some sunlight. Oh, good cat! Oh, and here we go. Okay, Jess. Jess is not playing. She is uh, very serious up at the easel tonight. She came uh, right in with the conceptual approach as well. Absolutely. That certainly elevates the piece to, uh, in terms of, uh, just as you said, the uh, the conception of it. It's very cool. And I think that she's using um, either charcoal or maybe some sort of chalk pastel. Mm -hmm. and she really that very nicely there. Mm -hmm. The We're getting those, uh, the cables connecting the bridge and I love how close we are seeing her reference versus the painting. Like it's to the same scale even. And so we're really getting this quite literal opportunity to see the translation of the reference through the artist's brain into their hand onto the canvas. That's very true. Yeah, and it's, um, and again, you know, just the different approaches. Some people choose to have a reference photo and you know some do don't and some are going more abstract from the imagination and uh, here Jess is certainly paying a great deal of attention to the detail and form that is depicted. And I don't really think we've chatted yet about her use of tape here. We've got uh, some surprising shapes that she's made with tape and I'm not sure uh, how that's going to be revealed. You're right, and I think that might be a little bit of foreshadowing, perhaps. She might even take some splashes of color across this canvas before the night is done, before the round is done. Seven minutes left, perhaps some paint, and then peeling back that those uh, those tapes, you know, we shall see. I love a good tape pull. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite, most satisfying moments of art battle. Exactly, and another great strategy to rack up those votes. That wow totally. factor. The audience loves uh, a tape pull, especially when it's uh, just that clean, satisfying goodness. Back with Wendy here, and it's so abstract, but I also think that you were totally spot on in the way that you called it of being um, a cityscape that is reflected in the water. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's something perhaps familiar about this kind of theme, uh, you know, coming from Vancouver, as I do, you know, the uh, celebration of the balance between the city and the water is familiar and poignant. 
Isn't it just so wonderful the way that uh, these works can really kind of evoke different memories as well from different people? Like, I love that that's uh, bringing memories uh, of a certain place for you. Mm hmm. Isn't that, isn't that the power of art? The power of art. Oh man, I'm so excited about this pink. Yeah, look at that. Jennifer Roberts. I also really love these just big, bold swipes of color. And I kind of can't believe how strong this yellow is over top of all of those uh, blue drips. Great opacity there. Mm hmm. And I really love the uh, the contrasting um, directionality of them. It's sort of is another element of uh, tension that I think is present in this painting, given the for one thing, the asymmetry of it and then also the contrasting drip directions. There's, you know, something going on here. That's for sure. Tension. That's such a, a great element to point out and something that I think a lot of artists um, tend to underutilize in their work, especially at Art Battle. We think of about movement and composition and stuff like that, but uh, often creating that sense of tension, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what creates that, but it can really introduce such an engaging factor in a piece. Mm-hmm. And uh, since the last go round here, uh, Rosanna has added a display of shooting stars enchanting and so subtle too uh, i think it's really easy when you're working in uh heavy black and white and when especially when you're working with night sky to kind of overdo it and overblow it but uh just this tiny little dashes of uh the shooting stars just such a nice subtle addition absolutely We are entering into our final minutes. We have just under four minutes remaining on the clock and voting is open at artbattle.com slash AB2467. So make sure that if you're not registered to vote yet, head on over there and enter your phone number uh, and you will choose your favorite artist of who you want to move on to our final round. Uh, okay, so not a bridge. I think that it's the top of a carousel. Oh. I like it. I like it. Maybe? I was thinking it might be some sort of ornate pizza, but maybe that's just because <laughs> I'm hot. I would eat that. I would eat that ornate pizza. But uh, I, I, don't... I feel like it, it's like almost like the edge of this nostalgic oh. uh, photograph. Yes. yes, 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 a carousel. The I one that goes, so. not uh, with like the, the horses. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Would, Interesting. Would love to hear from uh, you guys in the comments of what you think Joseph's piece is, uh, and if you think it's a carousel, if you think that it is another object. And back with Anna and our super strong bridge here. Yeah, and I'm loving the uh, attention to detail with the cables, the vertical cables that she's added. Um, they're adding a nice um, contrast on the yellow street. Bit of a striping effect. Yeah, I love that. It's such a, a, a small detail, but it makes such a huge difference. And yeah. uh, it really just continues to underline this textural component that Anna has going on in this piece. Yeah, and it's these kinds of elements that uh, the artists will be bringing in the last couple minutes of this first round of Art Battle San Francisco. Sort of the season opener, you were saying earlier. Um, the first time that they have uh, uh, had an Art Battle in San Francisco since... Uh, when was it exactly? Uh, in late March, we had the San Francisco City Finals. And yeah. uh, that one artist went to U.S. Nationals. That was Mona Faroki. And uh, so this is our first time holding 
uh, an art battle in this new season. So starting tonight, we will have our first qualifying artist uh, who will qualify for the 2024 San Francisco City Championship. Perfect. And perhaps that is the theme of the bridges, the uh, um, bringing, uh, bridging the past into the future. Love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is fun. I love uh, some good brush lashing where mm. we're just getting this like directional spattering. Yes, I love it. And these are the, the final exciting moments where, you know, artists can really pull out some surprising moves. All right. I think we're a few seconds ahead on our timer. Uh, that marks the end of our very first round of our season opener of Art Battle in San Francisco. So now is your job, viewers, to vote at artbattle.com slash AB2467 and, of course, participate in the auction as well. All of these works are available for silent auction at that same link. You don't need to be in the room to collect. We will ship them to you. Uh, any favorites from this round, Tyson? Great question. I was just thinking about that. Hmm. Well, you know, um, hmm. Let's see. Jess Bolt really, you know, came in strong with that conceptual piece with the map and the uh, on the bridge in the foreground. I think that'll certainly uh, do well for, you know, pleasing this audience here in San Francisco. Uh, and of course, Rosanna here with a very interesting and intriguing uh, environment that she has invited the audience to view. Yeah, it's Hard just so immersive. Uh, mm -hmm. the do you have Have you got a favorite, would you say? Um, honestly, I'm really here for Joseph. It's such a minimalist piece. And the reveal factor for me uh, of this being a carousel, or at least that being my impression of it, uh, was really cool. I feel like there's a sense of nostalgia there. And uh, I just love that treatment. And uh, I would say that this piece from Anna was a standout for me as well. Uh, especially when we were noting that we were seeing those just amazing cable lines literally carved into the piece. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I love the uh, flashes of color on the water as well. I didn't really notice that before. Oh, so good. So good. This is one of those pieces that you could just continue to find little, little uh, fun moments in it. I think you were really onto something there about uh, Joseph and the minimalism of of the uh, of the carousel. You know, just doing a lot with a little, which is a real um, sign of control and skill in, a, in an artist's approach. I think you know to not feel they need to do build the whole canvas with action. You know, to you know show some restraint, and I, I think that's an interesting aspect of that. Such a good point. And uh, I feel like we also have some elements of restraint here from Jess in that I think that what she was doing with the tape uh, was a reveal of like a Polaroid shape. But I also am mm -hmm. really liking the composition within a composition and the way that she's created so much breathing room for this. Totally. Absolutely. And I love the... Uh, the way that the grid of the cityscape creates sort of the framework for the contrast uh, and also the structure of the shape. It kind of like served well to map up the proportions almost. Oh my god, totally. I definitely see that now. Uh, we would love to hear from you guys in the comments about what your favorite pieces were uh, from round number one. And we will be having round number two coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, and pretty exciting. Uh, Tyson and I will be back in just a few minutes to help introduce you to our second six artists. So stay tuned. And also very fun. We will be having a wild card artist pulled from the crowd to come paint up at the easel uh, in our second round. So make sure that you stay tuned and we will be back soon. Yes, oh yes.
All right, guys, so as we get ready for round two, round two is going to have a wild card. That means you guys can participate. So if you'd like to be in the pool, to be drawn for a wild card opportunity to paint on stage live tonight and win 250 smackers, come and find us. We'll put your name in the bucket, and we'll make sure you get on it. $250. It's almost late. The bucket's coming over. Bring on the bucket! I need this break, meet everything but the girl. to the DJ booth, bucket to the DJ booth.
We're at 20 Speakeasy on Cinco de Mayo. We will put it on the Heart Battle uh, recommends. And uh, now let's bring up Dragon. Green Dragon? Dragon King? Not all dragons are green. How could you? I love you. I'm green with envy. Okay, she is going to draw our wild card. So would you do that? And then Mr. Dragon, Mrs. Dragon, Dragon? Mix. Mix Dragon will introduce all of the artists. So, Natalie Zeza. Natalie, are you here? Come on over. Let's go. Get your paints, girl. You got to get up on the stage. Okay, I'm handing it over to Mix Dragon. He's learning. He's learning. All right, the queer is taking over the mic. So how are we doing, Great Northern? I see that you are all stoned and placated, so that's good. That's great. We love that. I'm here to introduce our next round of artists. Are we ready? No, that is that is so sad. Are we ready? There we go. All right. This first artist loves telling her story or others through paintings. Her speciality is doing it with bright colors, and she believes it impacts everyone's positivity. Lord knows we need that in 2023. Give it up for Sabrina Evans! <laughs> Sabrina, where are you? You here? Hope so. There? That's Sabrina? Yes! Alright, artist, be ready. I'm gonna summon you. This next artist art is colorful yet dark. Hi Sabrina. Her work is free and constantly changing. She is inspired by nature's colors, textures, and mind tricks. Ooh, I'm ready for mind tricks. Give it up for Dakota Crawford! There's Dakota. There she is. Ooh, and I'm loving this plastic robe. Yes. Next up, this artist is a Brooklyn born and raised artist. Coming from a family of artists, Legacy Kid, he has attended both art high school and college. At college, he learned about the concept of Afrofuturism. Since then, he has been dedicated to the creation of arts that reflects both science and social justice perspectives. Wonderful. Give a big round of applause for Samuel M. Walker. Yes. Our next artist. I love this bio. This artist once got expelled from school for doing graffiti, and now he makes a career out of it. He just does what he does and hopes to make it look dope as possible. This is his second time in our battle. Give it up for Ryan Schumann. I mean, I mean, my team keeps saying be gay, do crime. Do crime, do graffiti, do art, do it all. Hi, Ryan. Hello. Our final artist. This artist was raised in Compton, California. Oh, he is self-taught and began his art at age six. He focuses on drawing and painting, but also uses digital media. Give it up for our last artist, Anthony King. Oh, 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 oh. All right. And is our wild card ready? Hey, Anthony. Oh, she's getting her paints. She's getting ready. Oh, we know we're gonna give her all. Oh, there she is, our wild card, yes! <laughs> Natalie, welcome. Now, give some extra special love to her because it is brave as hell to just go to an event and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be a part of this. Oh, she brought her smock. Mm. She came prepared. You knew you were gonna get drawn, didn't you? What a smock! All right, I guess I'll, I guess I'll give you back the mic. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, all right. Artists, are we ready? Put your little hands in the air if you are ready. Yes, yes. Almost there. Royal card, are you ready? Yeah, 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 you're ready. You got this. All right. Let's go counterclockwise with that slow, beautiful crawl, my friend. Please, please don't just stand in one place. It makes it difficult. In five, four, three, two, one.
All right, we have just begun round number two of our battle in San Francisco. My name is Morgan Booth, and I am here with the one, the only, all-around creative dude, Tyson Cody. Welcome, Tyson. Thank you so much, Morgan. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Here we are, the second round of the night, looking at Sabrina Evans' very confident streak there directly across the canvas. What she's depicting, only time and talent can tell. <laughs> what an intro. Love that. But I feel like, okay, so I've seen uh, Sabrina, aka her artist name, SAB. Uh, I've seen her paint quite a few times, and she often goes very uh, body focused. So I think maybe these two abstract lines could be maybe depicting some feminine curves. Indeed, they're becoming less abstract with every stroke. Over cool, here with cool. Dakota Crawford. Uh, first off, excellent jacket, Dakota. We love it. Uh, and this oh, yeah. is, I think, Dakota's sixth art battle. Okay. So no yeah. stranger to the canvas, no stranger to the battlefield of art battle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am super excited to see Dakota paint because uh, I was reading up on her today and something that she was saying is that she's studying to be an astro astrophysicist and that kind of space influence often shows up in her work. So looking forward to seeing if that uh, makes it to the easel today. Ooh, exciting. And Samuel has coming come in so strong on this uh you know just over a minute into the uh, into the round here and so much of the canvas has been covered with this rich blue hue yeah this just this blue is just jumping out and grabbing you it's uh super vibrant and i think is going to be a really good strategy to get people on his side from the start you know people are already like whoa what's going on over there Absolutely. Blue is truly a crowd pleaser. Ooh, and we got some tape Don't lines. Don't get on the other primary colors. <laughs> Don't even get me started on red. <laughs> yellow? Oh, here we got it. We got a little yellow now here. Oh. Yes, love yellow. Such even tape lines here from Ryan, and I believe that this is his second art battle. And uh, something really fun that our announcer said was uh, that Ryan was once expelled for graffiti and now makes his living off of it. Hey. Gotta love that. Nice. Love that. Making oh, it work with what he's got. And what he's got is certainly an interesting approach to the canvas. Very exciting and engaging to see. I'm really jazzed that Ryan is, uh, he's brought these tape lines all the way over the edge and he's already uh, painted and treated the edge. I feel, I have high expectations from Ryan just from that, uh, bringing it over to the side move. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, totally. And Anthony King with coming in hot with a very intriguing skull face. Yeah, giving us that strong symbology right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And we talked often about how, uh, you know, coming in strong with uh, a very identifiable, um, you know, symbol symbolism or uh, image like that can, you know, play in a person's favor or it can play against, you know, or we got to just hope there are some. Uh, people who appreciate the macabre in the audience tonight. Yeah, are they going to be contemplating life and death as they w look on at uh, Anthony creating his piece? Well, I suppose at the best of times, art has the power to make a person ponder those such themes, and maybe Anthony King will uh, evoke those in uh, the viewers at home. And uh, if you are watching tonight, be sure to cast your votes at artbattle.com slash AB2467. Okay, and here we are with our wild card artist. I believe her name is Natalie, and Natalie got pulled from the crowd. She was not an artist who was pre-registered to paint. Uh, she just put, was brave enough to put her name in the hat, and she just got called up to the easel. Oh, that is so exciting. 
uh, and you know, just another one of those great elements of art battle, you know, that surprise factor. And here she is painting a very lovely ocean scene. I'm transported. Yeah, we're getting uh, this soft brushwork, kind of bringing all of these colors in from the sides. Back with Sabrina yep. here. Ooh, I'm liking it. Yeah, I think that this is uh, crowd-pleasing imagery here. I think uh, what's not to like here, uh, you know, a, a person in motion, you know, looks to be uh, perhaps even dancing, who knows? For me, this line, the central line that's running the length of the torso is so interesting and makes it, uh, adds that kind of complicating factor that makes it just a little bit more engaging than a regular um, bodyscape. You're right, you know, with the, it, it almost makes the, uh, the the figure abstracted, even though we know what we're looking at. There, mm -hmm. there, yeah. mm -hmm. kind of just appreciate the shapes and the form even more so than the person necessarily. And that little hit of pink that's just kind of creeping up over the front is really beautiful as well. Just a, a little subtle pop of color. Uh, I think that Sabrina is going to be a fan favorite and we are only uh, not even seven minutes fully in. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to be right about that. Back with so Dakota. Is Dakota working all in white so far? It's hard to say. Wouldn't that would, that would make sense? Currently, yeah, because can't drawing. see anything. I would. Uh, I'm assuming that she's working all in white, but how how crazy would it be also if there was just no paint and she'd just been like miming painting the whole time? I don't think I she's doing. It, but I think it'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm with that. I, 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 until I can actually see anything on the canvas, um, I'm going to go with that because that's a really hilarious plot. <laughs> performance art battle. Yes. Performance well, I mean, the, the jacket is almost performative. Okay, now there's color. I'm seeing. Yep. Yeah, no, Dakota is definitely doing a painting here. This is not uh, performance art, and uh, and what a color it is that we are uh, finally able to appreciate on that canvas there. Yeah, that splash of turquoise. Uh, Beautiful. Ooh, Samuel, interesting uh, evolution here of this piece. I think that we've got um, perhaps an underwater scene here. Totally nautical. Totally nautical. I'm definitely getting uh, Finding Nemo vibes here. Mm -hmm. I was almost uh, getting a little bit of Avatar, the, the new film with all of the interesting underwater creatures. I don't know if you've seen it, but I, so there's, yeah. with, there's something magical going on here. Yeah, I'm uh, feeling very intrigued with this. Uh, I'm really enjoying the way that Samuel is uh, depicting light and how all of the light is just so blued out by uh, it being filtered, the color being filtered through the water. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of, there's definitely some depth that it creates, you know, and a sort of a curiosity about what's beyond. Oh, okay. So here for it. So here for it. So Ryan has done his tape poll already, and now we're getting this just beautiful, intricate typography going on. Yeah, it's elegant and uh, very well uh, spaced out. Clearly, he's done a lot of uh, practicing of, of those. It's uh, really nicely balanced as well. And I love the, the contrast of the uh, the white and dark hue. God damn, and what a steady hand. Oh my goodness. This is so crispy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crispy is right. And there's that, I really love that element of uh, graffiti uh, art that really kind of uh, 
you know, it, it bal- it's not even so much about the word itself or the meaning um, that the word has, uh, but just the execution of the line work uh, can be so expressive and so full of um, attitude and rebellion and uh, also elegance. I mean, this is sort of an old English um, style of typography. Tyson, you're so right. The uh, Everything that's going on with the line work of this typography, because I, I can't see what it says yet, but I'm already a fan because the design element that is present here is uh, just very admirable. I'm, to be honest, I'm not usually a, a typography in painting at Art Battle fan, but it's really, really working, uh, really working for him. Mm-hmm. Anthony now adding in, um, I think, a floral on top of his skull, kind of just underlying that, uh, underlining that memento mori kind of vibe of life versus death. Is it a uh, butterfly? Could uh-huh. a flower? Butterfly, flower, we shall see. We shall tell the time and tell and we'll say, we'll say. <laughs> I love that. I'm uh, going <laughs> to use that, we're going to use that. Perfect. It's a really cool uh, environment, though, there. What's the name of this venue again in San Francisco tonight? We are at the Great Northern, uh, and this is a venue that we have been at for quite some time. It is the home of our battle in San Francisco. And they well, even it looks have like a great event. It's Super fun. really fun. Great crowd um, in San Francisco. So if you are in the area and uh, watching with us online, thinking about whether or not you want to intend to attend in person, you should definitely go. It's super, super fun. The venue, Wild card. For the next art We've got uh, some narrative elements being introduced now with our rock and a little figure uh, sitting atop the rock. I'm feeling like this is a little bit of maybe an aerial homage. Mm, good piece. I was thinking about how the uh, the peaceful scene and, and the calm light and calm water uh, really kind of evokes a sense of tranquility. And then the addition of the rock and the lone figure uh, creates a sense of, you know, solitude, which is appealing. And that's kind of a nice effect that a painting can have and give you a sense of calm or uh, a, a moment of repose. You know what? I like yours better. I retract my Disney comments. Well, even uh, <laughs> on the close-up there, <laughs> on the close-up there, it looked like it wasn't the mermaid. It looked like they had been there in a crouching um, position, hugging the knees. And yeah, Ariel, Ariel did not have knees until much later in the film. This is true. But yeah, the, uh, the stance of the figure is definitely giving that, um, that sense of loneliness that uh, is being contrasted by our bright palette. Mm-hmm. Sabrina, I love the different uh, thicknesses of lines that she's using here. Yes, she's paid a close attention to thickness. And uh, I think the background is white and is painted at the same time. And I'm just enjoying the, the subtle way that Sabrina has uh, added that kind of finishing element to this piece. Mm-hmm. And there's a, a beautiful structure as well, I think, to the uh, the panels of different hues that she's placed, you know, and there is um, sort of a limited color palette, but uh, she's done a lot with it. Absolutely. Uh, just using the subtlety to her advantage. Um, and Sabrina is a, where, a very well-versed art battle artist as well. She's painted in Los Angeles. Uh, in 2020, I think she actually painted in Bath uh, in the UK. So she is uh, taking over. Damn. Okay, so our color mystery um, from Dakota is now being unveiled. We've got all of this gorgeous teal and uh, some more almost like an anemone going on where uh, 
the artists are just reading each other's minds tonight. We had so many bridges in the first round, and now we have two underwater scenes in our second round. Delightful. And with just about five minutes remaining on the clock, voting is now open for round number two. So head over to artbattle.com slash AB2467 to cast your vote. The top two artists from this round and from our previous round will move forward into the final. Ooh, I gotta That's stop talking because this is so cool. Yeah, no kidding. Oh. What in the world? Plot twist. Oh, is Total that, plot twist. Is that like a barnacle or is that like a coral that she's revealing? It's so... I just love the technique and it's so completely unexpected. It's prime time for wow factors though, you know, in the last five minutes. Again, this is when the artists really pull out some... Uh, some surprising maneuvers and can really take uh, their their paintings to another level. Prime time for wow factors is totally correct. I'm actually wondering whether or not she's using um, something called masking fluid, which is uh, like a rubber paint that you paint on to the canvas and then once it dries you can peel it up and it will uh, have masked off anywhere that you painted it. That is very cool. Thanks for sharing that insight, didn't realize. Always here for the technical facts. And I'm here for the uh, <laughs> discourse. Yes, you get points for I am getting Avatar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are unfamiliar creatures. Oh no, that's a crab down bottom left. Sort of crab's perspective, almost a a David and Goliath uh, mythology being drawn out upon here. <laughs> yeah, and we've got, I think, a little squid chasing um, our central creature here. Great use of perspective. I love that we're, we're basically in the position of the crab looking up at all of these creatures. Crab's eye view. Yeah. A crab's eye view. Oh my gosh, Ryan. So clean. So clean. Crispus uh, L. Sorry, what'd you say? I said I love the laurel. It almost looks like a kind of an, or, an ornate just squiggle there on the uh, um, just, uh, almost, just below the top uh, writing there. Yeah, that compositional element just really breaks everything up and adds just even more style to a piece that is just uh, exuding so much style. Yeah, so true. And, and on the subject of composition, you know, the, the use of those little lines and that initial uh, paper reveal uh, was a really great approach to creating a, a very, very distinctive composition here. And again, again this is just, just to who he was a very, very bold choice as well. I am loving it. I'm really, really, really loving it. Uh, and I also feel like this is a really mature uh, method of painting for art battles. So many different techniques used with the masking, uh, the gradients, all of this clean line work. You know, this would uh, typically take Ryan, I'm, I'm sure, a long time in studio. And here we are getting to witness it in 20 minutes. So true. And I just think that this would have so many cool places to appear on a wall, you know, in like a tattoo shop or an auto body shop or in a in a bar. You know, there's so many places that this art would be appreciated, I think. Anywhere that the badasses hang out. Anywhere where the cool kids are sitting. So if you're a cool kid and you are sitting and you want to gaze upon that piece in your own space, uh, make sure that you head over to artbattle.com slash AB2467 and bid on that in the auction. I know that I'm a little bit tempted, actually. Art could be yours. These arts could be yours hanging on your wallet at home. This awesome skull and butterfly? Yes, you called it. Perhaps I think we're going monarch here. here. Mm hmm. Ooh, I wonder if it's um, an homage to the uh, late deceased queen. The monarch is dead. Oh, interesting. 
I'm uh, gonna start having you write all my artist statements, Tyson. <laughs> uh, back to the moment of tranquility. Oh, getting our countdown here. Oh my gosh, down to the final okay, 10 yeah, seconds. It's your turn. Please vote for your favorite artist via your cell phone device. And these guys are finished. Wow, what a round. I feel uh, that we had so many different styles on view in, in this round in particular. I'm uh, really enjoying the variety that we've been treated to today. Absolutely. There, there was quite a bit of variety in this round, and uh, it was certainly a, quite the treat to see. And, um, and a, a lot of, uh, you know, fun individuals as well. That's another great aspect of the, uh, you know, live painting is to get to see these individuals in work, in action. And, uh, and uh, it's just been a pleasure to see. Oh, for sure. Seeing the different personalities that step up to the easels is definitely one of those uh, factors that continues to be such a joy at our battle, especially because realizing that art for artists can be quite isolating. Uh, and so to kind of be on display with not only their work, but their personalities too, is a very cool factor to enjoy. Very cool factor. Um, and I remember you talking about how it's so cool that you get to, you know, see these individual painting and uh, creating a work of art before your eyes. And then you can own this and you can have a piece of history. Basically, I think you were saying one one uh, battle recently, and I think that's a great way of looking at it. You know that you can have these pieces of artwork um, that you got to witness coming to, into existence. Yeah, it really represents this memory of the creation of the piece, and also the memory of uh, the night, the occasion, uh, the support of that artist. Especially, I love when uh, collectors buy from artists that they don't know. I think it's just such a wonderful way to connect with new people in this, just such a unique way. Mm -hmm. oh, Some I think nice highlights here. They might be manta rays, perhaps? The ones on the top? Might be like a flock of manta rays. You ever seen a flock of manta rays? Or a school of them? Okay. I can't say that I have. I cannot say that I have. But now, perhaps I have. Now you have. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And again, from Ryan, um, being completely transparent, I still have yet to um, figure out how to read it. But if you uh, have deciphered it in the comments, we would love to hear from you. I love the different textures as well that are happening in this. They're, the little white dots that are spattered across it are really what? neat. Yeah, I just noticed those. It's got the regality about it, the yes. whole thing. You know, it's really, it's, it, it uh, you know, again, I don't know what the words are, but they look important. I'm going to pause this later and come back to it and read it or i'll just message ryan yeah for sure i'm definitely curious um if anyone is actually curious about checking out any of the artists who've painted tonight and you want to uh, find them on instagram go to the art battle san francisco instagram account where we have shared all of their profiles and you can go support them by giving them a follow and speaking of uh social media presence Tyson, where can our listeners find you on the internet? Well, you could scooch on over to my Instagram if you felt so inclined at Tyson Cody. It's T Y S O N C O A D Y uh, on the old Instagram. And uh, yeah, would love to catch up there. And I am at Morgan Booth Art if anyone is uh, curious about me. And Morgan shares just wonderful pieces of artwork and is a fantastic painter in her own right. So tune in for a kick. And uh, Tyson and I will actually be hosting a live event on Tuesday for our Toronto show. We actually do the live stream 
uh, on site at the event. So that is always a really exciting and engaging uh, show to tune into. So make sure to uh, watch our socials and see us posting the link for the Art Battle Toronto show on Tuesday, April 25th. I can't wait. That is going to be just such a blast because art battle events rock. So thank you everybody who has tuned in to watch from home. It's great to have you here. We're having a blast and there's still one more round to go tonight at Art Battle San Francisco. And our votes are flooding in right now and we will very shortly have our winner announcement. We'll get to see which four artists We'll be moving forward into the final round and we'll have another 20 minutes on the clock. Uh, that's kind of a, a shocking, uh, it's, it's shock and awe to be an artist that goes into the final because you've just done this really brave, uh, physical, creative thing of creating paintings in front of everyone. Uh, and then you, you're hoping that you win, but then when you get called, you have to realize that you do it all over again. Yeah, no, no kidding quite the uh, energy expenditure, I would think. And you have to come up with um, a completely new idea to uh, bring up to the easels as well. Some artists like to come with two ideas in mind, hoping that they'll get to the finals. And some artists are just completely uh, shocked and will make something up on the spot. It's always fun to see everyone's battle strategy. Battle strategy, it is. I love that analogy. And uh, it's exactly that. And always so exciting to see what uh, weapons these uh, artists have to wield in the field of battle. In the what field was of that that you, What was it that you called uh, the palette knife? Oh, the artist's sword. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. think that I wanna, <laughs> if I was an artist that used palette knives, I would totally. Uh, get a print of that or tattoo that or something it's a good oh. it's a good one nice <laughs> yeah or a, a tattoo of a little figure holding um a painting <laughs> knife as if it were a sword that'd be good perfect absolutely perfect i think uh tyson your uh, ideas are in the running maybe for some new art battle logos Ooh, nice <laughs> You heard it. And I heard from a little bird that uh, we will be announcing Art Battle merch on the main Instagram page at Art Battle soon. So if anyone uh, is interested in purchasing AB merch, we've got some that will be released very soon. So if you're not following at Art Battle on Instagram yet, uh, make sure that you do that because you guys will be the first ones to hear about the drop. That is so cool. You know, hey, I think even just the words art battle next to each other, uh, even for somebody who might not know about the, this awesome uh, live painting event, it's uh, a, 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 perhaps a thought provoking pairing of words, you know, like a real conversation starter. So get yourselves this hot, hot merch. Yeah, good, uh, good icebreaker to start a discourse about art because I've uh, often told people that I work with art battle and they go, art, battle, those don't match. And then you explain the whole concept and it's fun to talk about um, just the nature of competition and how does that fit in the world of art and creativity and community and lots of fun. Yeah, well, it is truly something, uh, it is something truly unique where you know given the confines of 20 minutes uh you know given the confines of generating a work within that time um in front of a crowd you know and you know like you were saying earlier about how you know being a painter is often about you know a lot of solitary time working on your craft and then this is completely just a, a different environment and a, a fun exciting environment but perhaps a little daunting for people who aren't used to being uh, in front of a crowd. Absolutely. It's uh, it's an incredible mix of emotions that a lot of people uh, who participate in art battle just become completely enamored of. Um, that's why we have artists like Jess Bolt and uh, Sabrina who are joining us for their sixth, seventh, eighth battle. I uh, love that. Uh, the kind of art battle addiction a little bit that happens. And if anyone 
is watching our battle and your mirror neurons are firing and you want to step up to the easel as well, uh, you can apply. We take applications from artists all over the world at artbattle.com slash artists. Look how good those two blue paintings go next uh, side by side to each other. When it, when we pan out, for, uh, uh, sorry, to, I was like, oh my God, you have to see this. <laughs> You have to see this. Yeah, I love they look, when... They look great together, the, the paintings. And uh, this is certainly, even as it's wet, it's like really amazing to see the, the brush strokes are so... Look how these two kind of go together with the underwater scene and even the... the gesture, like the, 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 br- the movement of it is kind of complementary. Yeah, I totally see what you mean, uh, especially with our two, uh, our two blue paintings, where I'm definitely seeing from Dakota that uh, underwater scene. Mm-hmm. I think the point is, folks, that you should purchase both paintings to hang on your wall uh, next to each other, sort of a, a package deal. A package and- deal, a pair, a, an unintentional diptych. Indeed. From diptych to cryptic, here we are back on a, a fascinating execution of a wonderful graffiti-esque style. So good. And uh, this painting is even continuing to paint itself as we kind of uh, view some of the drips that are still active on that piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, We will be back in just a few minutes for our winner announcement of our top four artists. I am uh, just going to grab a glass of water and we'll be back real quick. Sounds good. Stay tuned, folks. Dragon 
a real treat to you coming up next. The man behind Motown Mondays. If you've not gone to Motown Mondays, you need to do it. It's Madrone Art Bar every Monday. It's the best party in the city, I promise you. Let's give it up for Don Gordo. on the Warriors here. Four minutes left. Kings 86, Warriors 108. going to the final, Wendy Trapner. Wendy Trapner, come on back and grab your paint. You are going to the final. Come on down. And then our finalist coming from round one going to the art battle final is Rosanna Manarino. Rosanna. That's a beautiful piece. All these pieces were great in round one. I really like them. Round two was really amazing as well. Here comes the round two winners going to the finals. Our first round two winner going to the finals, Ryan Schumann. Ryan, come on back. And our last artist going to the final, Sabrina Evans. Give it up for Sabrina. We're going to get that started in about 10 minutes. So Sabrina, Ryan, Rosanna and Whitney, come to the back. Let's get your paints ready. We're going to start the final battle in about 10 minutes. Here comes Don Gordo at you. Make sure you grab a drink. Stick around for the final. $250 at stake. Remember, May 21st, there's a discount code on all of the posters. Bid on this artwork. Uh, the artwork will be ready right after the final. So if you bid on the artwork, keep an eye on it. We'll get that to you right after the final. Starting the final in 10 minutes. Final last 20 and you can stay dance all night. Thank you guys. Rosanna, Whitney, Sabrina, and Ryan going to the finals in 10 minutes.
to center stage, please. That's Sabrina, Ryan, Rosanna, and Wendy. All artists to the center stage. Hey, Mikey, can we get the lights a little bit dimmer? Go into full battle mode.
these finalists right here about the rockets. This is for all the marbles. All right. Here we go, guys. We're into the final in five, four, three, two, one. Our battle final. Let's go. All right, we have just begun our third and final round of Art Battle in San Francisco. Up at the easels for our round number three, we have from round number one, Wendy Tratner, who did that incredible reflected cityscape, uh, and also Rosanna uh, Manorino, who did the wonderful silhouetted figure swinging from the tree. And from our second round, the finalists are Ryan Schumann, who did our incredible uh, graphic typography piece, and Sabrina, AKA Saab, who painted uh, the just really gorgeous female bodyscape. So here we are back up at the easels for our third and final round with 20 minutes on the clock. Very exciting to hear these finalists. They are quite a range and variety among them. Uh, so it'll be certainly very exciting to see uh, what transpires this final round. I'm so excited to see what these artists' second offerings are going to be because it's such a, it's a huge creative expenditure uh, for them in, the, in their qualifying round and for them to have to get up to the easel and do it all over again is uh, I just can't wait to see what they do. Totally, and we were talking a little bit about that uh, that, that expenditure and the energy that is required uh, for these artists to uh, conjure up these works, to uh, imagine uh, something fresh right off the top of their head uh, and in front of an audience, no less. So it looks like the gimbal's gone awry and we are back. <laughs> Uh, so many exciting elements uh, at play when you are watching live artwork, uh, let alone a live stream. Uh, I love what Wendy is doing right now with these very translucent, streaky strokes over top of each other. Love the streaky strokes, absolutely. And that's, ooh. Yeah, and no kidding. And, and so much uh, has been communicated right now as far as the composition already. Um, and. Still, there's so much of this round left. Uh, it's so exciting to uh, imagine where this might go. And the the layering of this blue with the black over top of it, for whatever reason, it's just very satisfying. There's like a tranquility here. Absolutely, I think you're right. Uh, yeah, that blue. I think I think you and I have a bias towards that blue. Honestly, every time it comes on, both of us are like, "Yes, that yes. blue. Give me that yeah. one." Yeah, and, and here we are again. I mean, this is a <laughs> blue. Oh, don't that say blue for Rosanna. Why? So much has been done already in such a short amount of time. This is very cool. Uh, cool. I love the stark contrast of this silhouette in this ethereal plane. And just checking out uh, the kind of soft application here, I'm now realizing that this is spray paint because uh, I was wondering how Rosanna got such a beautiful gradient in the background sky of her first round qualifying. And uh, so now the secret is revealed. Uh, Rosanna is using a water-based spray. Here we go, no kidding. Oh, you're not driving anywhere. No kidding. We're getting a little bit. Got the apron. Jeez. We're getting a little bit of some uh, robot-y action from you, Tyson. Do you want to try uh, logging out and then coming back in? Looks like we've got a bit of a delay here. Brief pause on the live stream. And the addition here of all of these uh, little birds. Supporting local arts. Now it's time to support local bartenders. Grab a cocktail, grab a CBD, everybody, grab something. 
Such a beautiful and careful application technique here and as great use of compositional space already from Rosanna with the birds just kind of floating upwards into the sky. Moving over here to Ryan Schumann, who was our artist that did that absolutely incredible typography piece in the first or in the second round, but his qualifying round. And looks like we're being treated to more typography goodness uh, from Ryan. And we can just see this look of super concentration as he's laying down these very, very clean lines. Just so thoughtful uh, in his execution techniques. And I love the way that Ryan uh, is very considerate of the way that he builds out a painting. Tyson, what are your thoughts on this piece? Uh, and another bodyscape painting from Sabrina here. Although this time we're getting a little bit more of a back view in her first round qualifying piece, we had uh, very much a side view. We've got a little bit more of a three quarter turn going on here right now and still staying very much in the monochrome in our first seven minutes. Uh, and now getting into the shadow work of the legs and some of that really just beautiful use of weight of line from Sabrina. The way that uh, she adds thicker and thinner lines is so indicative of her style and uh, really makes this piece quite identifiable uh, just from the way that she applies these lines. Tyson, what are we thinking of Sabrina's piece? I think that she uh, paints with a, a certain celebration of the, the form. Uh, and I think that is something that resonates with a lot of people. And I think that'll serve well uh, tonight with the votes. Uh, and again, folks, if you haven't cast your vote, please do so. Uh, you know, we, we appreciate the ones who have uh, cast the votes tonight. And you can register to vote at the link that's on your screen, artbattle.com slash AB2467. And also all of the works created tonight are up for silent auction at that same link. You don't need to be in the room to collect them. We will ship them to you. Uh, moving over to Wendy here. Uh, Tyson, thoughts on the addition of our bird over top of this abstract? I think it's super cool to create a, a figure grounded in reality, you know, a real uh, a real noun, I suppose. You know, we've got ourselves a noun here in this uh, <laughs> mysterious uh, abstract ethos. The beautiful uh, uh, purple martin almost, or it kind of looks like a, a woodpecker in the, in the profile, but beautiful bird, love the hue. Yeah, and the way that it's just really interacting with the abstract environment. Often I find when artists are layering um, something figurative or over top of abstract, it just kind of exists over top. Um, but I feel uh, like yeah. the bird is really participating in the environment. I think that's a great way of putting it, uh, participating because the flow of the beak and the flow of the wind of uh, the wing are totally right, uh, right in the uh, in the theme of this sort of uh, flowy composition and I, you know i have to say i'm i'm sort of noticing almost like a similar kind of um a similarity between the approach here and on ryan's painting in in the in the kind of very long and uh you know swooping strokes 
Yeah, there's a, a little bit of visual communication there with uh, with that line work. I I totally see that, and I wouldn't have seen it at all. Yeah, but I can't wait to see where this goes, and uh, you know, if, if more uh, animals will arrive on the on the canvas there in the next ten minutes, we shall see. This is so cool. I love what she's done with the. Uh, black and white contouring of the woman's figure here in the foreground. Uh, sort of an unlikely execution to use the white lines uh, to, to to create the uh, the drawing of the, the the details. Yeah, those little hits of highlight, um, and then the way that Rosanna has carried that over stylistically onto the birds as well. Mm-hmm. And even overly, you know, stylistic clouds as well. There's like a hyper realism about it that makes it kind of um, almost disconcerting. Like there's something, it's peaceful, but there's also, there's, it seems to be almost like something forlorn about it. Yeah, and that's introducing that element um, that we were talking about earlier, that kind of intangible tension. Mm-hmm, the intangible tension, exactly. Oh my God, the cloud going over top of the figure, what? Yeah, plot twist, is she a giant? Such or a plot are these twist. just tiny clouds? <laughs> it really brings this piece into more of a surreal space. Uh, just the addition of the clouds that are interacting with the body, that's very cool. Very cool, absolutely, a wonderful plot twist. Uh, here with eight and a half minutes left of this final round of Art Battle San Francisco. Ooh, and I think I start to see a little bit of uh, star speckling as well, which is hey, what works. Rosanna was doing. Uh... Oh, what's going on there? Are you okay, able to do that? I think I, I think it might have said Cali. Very. We cool. shall see. Another artist has tapped into the typography realm and back to the master of the craft himself, Brian. Uh, wow, creating a very uh, surprising, surprising composition here with the eyeball here in the center. That is, it, that is an innovative use of the letters to create the actual shape and contour of this shape. So cool. Uh, blowing my mind right now. Totally thought that he was just going to be doing uh, concentric typography and then the added reveal of it actually being an eyeball is like blowing my mind right now. Absolutely. Actively, my mind is being blown right now. It's such a surprise, but I suppose we underestimated the degree to which he can, uh, you know, really utilize the canvas and create an interesting composition, similarly to what he did in the, uh, in, the in his first round with the uh, tape revealing st uh, tape, um, the tape revealing stripes rather. And something else that I'm really enjoying about watching Ryan is how much he uses his body to create the lines, you know? He's not just using his hand, his whole body is like taut with tension to create this level of control. Yeah, that's true. And it makes me uh, imagine him holding a spray can in, in a similar kind of way. Be oh, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I feel like Ryan's gonna be sore after this. Like this is like very physical painting. Totally. Well, what a fascinating uh, range of effects it creates, and and still again, uh, so distinctly remaining in the uh, monochrome or in the uh, in the in the two tones. And speaking of our monochrome elements, back with Sabrina here, who is using uh, that predominant black and white, and then now introducing these hits of color. Yeah, I think a little bit more of a range of color uh, in this painting, in this 
offering tonight from uh, in this round from Sabrina here, but uh, also sort of a different approach to the form as well. Like there's a little bit more um, looseness with the, the the definition of the shapes and the form. Uh, and the previous one was a little bit more like structured almost. Which yeah, is cool. there's more of like an embracing of organic quality, I think. Here. Mm -hmm. Those hits of yellow are so nice. Yeah, I love those in the blue and the red as well. Like it's uh, very cool, very cool. You know, and it's uh, perhaps a piece that we can all relate to. You know, we've all got bums, and uh, maybe this is just mm -hmm. sort of a, a a friendly reminder of the the unif the things that unify us. <laughs> Everybody has a bum, uh, and something that I'm actually just kind of noticing right now is that the figure's arms are upstretched as well in the same way that they were in uh, Sabrina's first round qualifying. And there's like mm -hmm. a celebratory nature to that. And it also allows her to really highlight the curves of the figure um, without having to kind of, mm -hmm. without the arms being in, in the way. Interesting uh, yeah. pose there. That's true. Whoa, Wendy. Wendy, how's it going? Wendy! Killing it. Now I'm realizing that the way that these lines are, they create sort of vectors now towards the central conflagration of colors here, what appears to be some sort of color explosion. Yeah, there's uh, just so much going on here, and I'm really enjoying the kind of minimalist treatment of the background being very clean and flat and then the introduction of all of this uh, color and texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a real um, contrasting of these uh, elements and it's very, but they're still cohesive. Over California Freeman. California dreaming. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it, but, uh, so good. So good. And there, definitely some good, an illustrated yeah. quality. Mm -hmm. This is a, a piece that you can imagine having a place on, on a wall somewhere uh, in your home. You know, it's a, a nice conversation piece and it certainly creates a, a tone and a sort of an atmosphere, uh, a certain tranquility again. Yeah, Rosanna has this really wonderful ability to uh, create works that have an environment that communicates an emotion. Mm -hmm. I love a good environment in a painting. And this, you know, if, how would you describe the environment created here, Morgan? I feel like there's like a descent into madness kind of thing going on from uh, Ryan's piece. The way that mm -hmm. we're getting this uh, like spiral downward and all of this overlap, it's uh, there's definitely tension within this piece and it's highly engaging. Absolutely engaging and intriguing and entertaining. Gosh that darn it. That piece is metal. That piece is metal is the way that I would describe it. Hardcore, absolutely. So clean uh, on the margins of Sabrina's piece. In the final minute, bringing it home. And she's actually been... Uh, she signed it like five minutes ago as well, which I think is uh, such a great confidence move. That's so true. No turning back, really. 30 seconds, y'all. Give a round of applause. 30 seconds. Let's see some energy. You know, I love the, uh, okay, the, the dispersion of the flashes of color. It almost kind of creates a, a sense of, that she's, 
you know, reflecting or capturing, uh, catching light from, uh, you know, unseen sources. Yeah, the way that it's just kind of skimming over the body. Mm -hmm. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's our battle finals. Nice. Oh, Gimbal. Gimbal Gonzo. <laughs> Gimbal Gonzo. Remember, 50% goes to the artist, so please support your local artist. And that is the round. Holy smokes. Round three has come to a triumphant close. And these painters have brought again an amazing offering each to the audience here at Art Battle San Francisco. Yeah, what a final, uh, especially for our season opener. I love uh, that we've had so many strong artists with very strong, like opinionated styles. Uh, I think that everyone was really true to their own style tonight. And I didn't see any crowd pandering pieces. I think everyone had this really organic, unique point of view. I think you're so right about that. And that is certainly one of the wonderful characteristics of art battle is to be able to see such a range of, of styles and approaches. And, uh, you know, I got to say, this is this is one of my favorites, you know, and though I'm not from California and the words don't necessarily mean too, too much to me, I think the execution is just pretty cool and I think the composition composition is nice and like the, the the effect of the clouds that are covering her kind of adds to the dreaminess of it all. And even the way that the figure is leaning forward a little bit as she's releasing the birds, there's like this hopefulness in that movement. That's a really good point. Good observation. And here with Ryan. Such intensity. Such, uh, it's such intensity, and we were kind of diving into it to like digest what it was. It's there's tension, and there seems to be like it's almost like anxiety or you know conflict or chaos. Oh, man. Yeah, but there, it's so cool that he had um, done the overpainting with the the larger white strokes on top of it all in the kind of the last moments to really add like in another layer of it all and that's what what is so effective about it is the several layers it really draws in the eye and it draws in the imagination of the viewer absolutely there uh, that was a big changing factor for me with the piece that um kind of took it out of being more of a design centric painting to being something that was um just pushed it a little bit into more of a captivating space. Definitely. Sabrina is sure to capture some votes tonight. Uh, again, you know, this is uh, a, cr a crowd pleaser. You know, this is the appreciation of uh, a beautiful human form here. And uh, certainly the kind of thing that um, people at home will enjoy as well as people there uh, live tonight in San Francisco. Oh, definitely. This piece uh, is definitely very collectible also in that I think it's one of those that is just going to keep uh, giving and the way that you're engaging with the piece and your eye is just bouncing around to all of these little moments and pops of color and texture. Mm -hmm. And voting. Uh, the votes are pouring in and it is quite close. So head over to artbottle.com slash AB2467 and make sure that you cast your vote because every vote really, truly does count. And the top artist from tonight will be the first qualifier of this new season of Art Battle in San Francisco to move forward to the city finals taking place in 2024. So very exciting. Exciting is the word, and it has been such an exciting event tonight. And all of your votes count, so thank you so much for participating uh, tonight. So far, uh, the night is not done. We are soon to announce the victor of the night of the season opener in San Francisco. Oh my gosh. I'm even just noticing in the bird, in all of the uh, 
the color pieces leading up to it, there's like micro texture within those as well. Big fan of micro texture. And uh, I think we're seeing, seeing some of that micro texture here in the sky and in the clouds. Um, Especially with the metallic. Uh, I think when we were actively within the stream, I don't think I realized that there were elements of metallic within this piece. But now uh, at this angle, I'm getting to see the real shine that's coming off of it. Oh, that's awesome. I just feel like there's an eye that's an eyeball in the middle of this that's peeking out. Me too. Like we've got the spiral, but it's definitely also giving eyeball. <laughs> definitely giving eyeball right now which i guess creates um contributes to the sense of tension in this is that it, it looks almost identifiable it's like what you were saying earlier that we you know seek representation uh, in uh, in, a, in an image and we aim to make sense of it and identify things with it but uh, perhaps it's just words in a circle who knows who knows only ryan i guess so And this piece from Sabrina here, I gotta say, I love the, the yellow hits. Yeah, I really just, I think she, it looks like she had so much fun with the brush strokes, especially around the hip, you know, there's the uh, switching directions of it all. It's, there's a lot of fun. And like I said it before, but celebration, you know, she, it's, uh, she does it with affection and, um, and it comes out as a fun piece, just a fun, that's such a great thing to point out about Sabrina's work, that she paints with affection. I love that. I love that you said that, and I hope that one day some, somebody sees my paintings and says that. I think that that's such a wonderful compliment to an artist. I think it's one of the uh, abilities of an artist is to kind of make a gesture of a gift to the audience you know it's a and it can be a gift to receive you know viewing a piece of art like we are seeing now and it's like a gift to have such a splash and array of beautiful colors uh meeting my eyes now there's such a joyfulness in this piece from wendy mm -hmm. i love the spatters it looks like a bouquet a tropical bouquet Okay. Totally. It is going to be a tough decision for our crowd to determine who is going to be the winner and who will be our first artist moving on to the finals or moving on to the city finals. Indeed. And who will, who be, will be crowned the winner? Who will wear the crown this night? <laughs> I feel like we should uh, start knighting artists with palette knives Absolutely. as mm -hmm. as they win if uh if you agree tell us in the comments and uh support my lobbying dream new tradition folk was folks was it born here tonight i think the best part tonight of this piece not. is uh that there's almost no paint at the bottom right before it meets the horizon line. And that really helps to establish some distance. It's not just a flat blue sky. There really is a very concentrated gradient there. Great point. A very wise uh, utilization of that segment of the composition. And there's a stark quality of the way that Sabrina approached this piece uh, by leaving the sides white that I think really helps to underline the emphasis of the character. Absolutely. I love the blue of the, uh, of the thigh on the left leg. It's super cool. Cool blue. And we actually have some very exciting streams coming up. 
Uh, over this weekend, we have tomorrow is going to be Chicago season opener. And then we actually have Minneapolis on Saturday. So uh, definitely some exciting shows to keep track of on the Art Battle streaming calendar. Absolutely. It's pretty cool that there's so regularly uh, such amazing, entertaining live painting that people can view from the comfort of their own home. They get to enjoy this unique event, which is both cultural and also wildly entertaining because it's competition. This is the, the battlefield of art battle. Something that is super cool that I've heard from some artists recently is uh, that they like to put on the stream and kind of half watch the battle while they're painting in their own studio. And I just think there's something so beautiful about that. That is so fun. That's that they're, they're painting with the artists, like even though they're not in the room. Oh my gosh, that is, that would be, I, I can imagine how watching this would generate uh, some fervor to the, to the paintbrush and, uh, and some excitement to one's personal session. I'm not gonna lie, I have, uh, I've between rounds picked up my brushes a couple of times and done a few strokes on the piece I've been working on. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Just getting a few uh, sneaky blends in there. Well, uh, it's a good time to mention that for those of you tuning in uh, who were not here earlier on, Morgan is a fantastic painter in her own right, and so be sure to check out her Instagram at Morgan Booth Art. It's dope. Oh, thanks so much. Oh, we're getting our winner announcement. A woo! And that one is, drum roll please, Wendy Tatum! Congratulations, Wendy, you have won our prize and get to participate in the finals. Maybe even the nationals, who the hell knows? Congratulations! Now we're gonna be turning off those ring lights. We're gonna give y'all time to bid and view all beautiful art that was created tonight live and created live for your entertainment please bid on local art please support your local artists and uh, yeah happy world time DJ Madre coming up next we need the party going guys and our winner has been announced Wendy Tratner a huge congratulations to Wendy uh, for the creation of two just absolutely stunning, super engaging pieces, and for earning her place now in the San Francisco City Final in June or in 2024. So huge congrats to Wendy Tratton. Absolutely, you know, and we talked earlier on about uh, the strategic choice to draw up upon some very distinctive imagery, and she chose this beautiful bird, executed it, executed it wonderfully, uh, and clearly won the favor of the audience tonight. Just so much joy infused in her paintings as well, and uh, it's just so wonderful to get to see her as she celebrates her win and uh, just really expressing the joy of her win as well. Totally, it's so fun to watch them all celebrate celebrate and rejoice. Um, and uh, the uh, the joy has clearly spread from the beautiful painting to the, uh, the beautiful uh, folks and presents. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us on the stream. Uh, we love hanging out with you guys and chatting about art. And thank you so much to Tyson for all of your unique insights and excitement uh, that you've brought to the stream tonight. We really appreciate it. I appreciate that, Morgan. It's been a, a real blast. So thanks again for everybody who was tuning in and thanks for having me art battle. And of course, a massive congratulations to all 12 of our artists tonight who uh, brought themselves and their courage and creativity to the easel. We are so grateful for you. And if you're an artist who's watching and want to apply to paint, 
artbattle.com slash artists is where you will find the artist application. And of course, a massive congratulations as well to Adrian, who is running the team in San Francisco and just runs such a great show. Thank you so much, everyone, and good night. We will be back on the stream again for our season opener in Chicago.